And you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, I'm Charlotte. I am Alvin. <laughs> Good evening, lovely ladies. I am Lakshmi, the moderator Hi, for this session. Hello. Hi. Wonderful meeting you all. Marina, may I request you to unmute? Yes. Okay. Thank to you. Mute. To mute or unmute? Unmute. Okay. Wonderful, lovely ladies. We have one more person coming in. Margaret, I think uh, she will join in soon. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, we are welcoming the most lovely ladies on this planet on, for this session today. I'm very happy to introduce our speaker, Shalit Stewart first, Senior Strategist, Relationship Manager, Harvard Business School Publishing Division, USA. Am I right, Shalit? How I yeah. correctly given the designation? Yes, you are. Thank you. Wonderful. We now have a dear friend, Alvin. Alvin, so good to see you on this uh, session. You. We have been meeting up and speaking on various sessions, but today it's my utmost pl pleasure to be part of this uh, bunch of ladies, you know, who are going to be speaking some interesting things. We're not going to discuss business, business per se. We're going to talk about people, culture, civilization. I love it. I Thank you so much. And Alvin, um, she is the diversity and inclusion lead for Europe for Pfizer and based out of France, but a global citizen, so to say. Yes. <laughs> and Marina, hi, so nice to see you today. You're looking as gorgeous as ever. Marina, is a, she's a business leader coming in from a beautiful country called Armenia. And we go back a very, very long time, India and Armenia. It's, it's a soul connect of many thousands of years. Welcome, a very warm welcome to you, Marina. Hey, thanks and greetings to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Ajahn, can you mute yourself? Ajahn, uh, a dear soul sister, she is part of Women Economic Forum and All Ladies League. Ajahn is representing a lovely country, Kyrgyzstan. She is based in Bishkek, and I'm so truly grateful to you for joining us today. Ajahn is just recovering from a not very good condition. Uh, the whole family has been ill, and uh, I thank your spirits, dear Ajahn. You know, uh, you didn't have to actually come, but you've taken all the trouble to be here. And COVID is not a great uh, situation to be in, and we are so happy to have our dear Ajahn back bouncing. And I guess in the next couple of weeks, you're going to regain all that energy from the lovely Italian food that you're going to be having from your restaurant. She is a restauranter, she is a public figure, she's a businesswoman, she's also the honorary council general for uh, Sweden, for, if I'm not mistaken. For Norway. For Only Norway. Norway. Okay, the neighbors, yeah. Norway. Multiple hats, many hats she wears, and uh, Ejan is a dear friend of mine. We met up in one of the Women Economic Forums a couple of years back, and Women Economic Forums actually, you know, it brings people together. And I think we're going to follow the same tradition uh, in future. Uh, we have our other speaker, Mar Maggie. Margaret is just logging in. We're kind of uh, formally informal. So I guess ladies, it's okay with y'all? We, yeah. all, we all live in a very formal world at our workplaces. But I think it's a good thing to now let our hair loose and just be connected and have a very, very comfortable, casual conversation around our topic, which is basically diversity dialogues, uh, a global perspective. So many lovely countries. Good evening, Maggie. Hi. So good to have you back. Margaret Lingden is um, Indian origin Estonian. Maggie is married to an Estonian. And she's in one of the most interesting professional spaces in the world. Maggie is a fellow, research fellow and a folklorist from Estonia. Now she's actually, I'm so amazed to meet a folklorist. It's been an, mm -hmm. it's been absolutely phenomenal experience for me to know Maggie. And I think uh, I would like to start with Ejan because she may not be able to stay on for too long. Um, she would like to exit as early as possible because of her health condition, and uh, I'm going to over to you, Ejan. Hello, ladies. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to meet all of you. 
Um, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me, ladies? Perfect. Yes, wonderful. Perfect. It's, it's such an honor for me to represent my country and to be a part of uh, this wonderful women group that uh, Harbin and all her wonderful teammates uniting us. And I'm inviting on behalf of uh, all people of Kyrgyzstan, all of you to come and visit our wonderful place. It's a mountain, small country. I think we're almost like Armenia. Uh, we love Armenian people and we love, uh, I've been uh, studying in the United States and I've been in Africa and I mean, all ladies who are here, I can really say they are my soul sisters. And of course, I love India. India is like very dear oh. to my heart. Um, I wanted to say, unfortunately, our country is uh, getting um, through a very difficult uh, time. Um, there are a lot of COVID uh, uh, lost, a lot of uh, people dead, unfortunately, even in my family. My grandma passed away uh, three weeks ago. My mother, not in good conditions. She's still recovering. I mean, it's like very difficult time. And what I wanted to say that uh, what is inspiring that uh, we have so many volunteers that our civic uh, society, community, uh, you know, people in villages helping uh, finding uh, for doctors these uh, special equipments, uh, uh, med med medicines, and even yes, we are not very rich country and uh, government does not have a lot of funds to support uh, so many uh, people who are sick. The civic, uh, uh, movements, uh, they are incredible and people doing great job uh, with supporting government. And I wanted to say uh, by statistic uh, yeah. among me medical staff, a lot of women. So women are, you know, uh, being uh, main warriors on this war. They are not seeing their families. They are uh, sleeping in uh, hospitals, you know, helping to the um, people to recover. So I really wanted to say that I'm thankful to all these wonderful uh, me medical uh, heroes, I should, I should say. And of course, men are trying their best, but to be in quarantine, uh, one of the biggest problems was everywhere in the world, as well in Kyrgyzstan, is the home um, violence, unfortunately. We have to speak about this. And there are a lot of issues that we are trying to solve as a uh, Kurak, it's a foundation of women entrepreneurs, and we are uniting a lot of women in regions to overcome um, all these, uh, unfortunately, not uh, easy things that women go through. And I wanted to say that, uh, uh, what is the uh, globalization? Of course, unfortunately, we all understand that standards of uh, women's rights dropping down everywhere, and we understand that uh, we are somehow losing rights in this matter. And uh, uh, what, go what is good that um, civil society is uh, finally, you know, uh, committed that yes, we have the problem of violence. Uh, yes, we have problem of uh, bride kidnapping. And we have, uh, we say, vision how to uh, resolve these problems. Uh, I can speak for a long time. <laughs> I thought uh, maybe you would have some questions. I will just, you know, I'm in this pandemic uh, volunteer job uh, since March. Uh, we've been uh, finding funds to bring all these special equipments, all these um, med med medicines. And as you know, our country has a lot of people who are migrating and work as uh, migrant workers. So we try to bring um, some uh, medic, uh, our citizens who work as doctors from uh, all over the world. So they are getting back to help uh, our country survive in this uh, hard COVID times. Well, I think uh, you are a very brave race. <laughs> I think this will also pass, you know, this will also pass. And it was very heartbreaking to know about the bride kidnapping. Um, we really wish uh, people of Kyrgyzstan uh, loads of uh, good wishes and, you know, all the things, good spirits from all of us so that the society improves on this score and also recover from the COVID scenario. But I think it has to improve. There's always a curve which, you know, it has to drop. Everything that goes up, you know, has to come down, even the COVID. So let's all look forward to a, 
a more optimistic world and that's yeah i'm very optimistic uh, 50, yes. 51 percent of uh, population of kyrgyzstan is women so women uh, we are surviving we are uniting we are teaching each other we have this uh, mentorship programs we are trying oh, online uh, making different groups of help uh, with whatsapp uh, communications uh, different women from villages unite to sell their products uh, abroad so we have a big program how we want to recover and i invite you sisters to be part of this program if you're interested in buying something from kyrgyzstan or coming and Absolutely. staying in our wonderful hotels we have beautiful beautiful resort please be part of it let's let's plan it for next year that you will be our sure. guest i'm inviting of you thank you so much thank, thank you thank you very much thank you dr shelit stewart um, it's it's so good to have you here and can we know from your side um, you are part of such a, a esteemed uh, university you're part of such an amazing what's it, it is an institution in itself and your work on the publishing side, I mean, how does it, um, what are your interactions with the multinational students and the, um, the faculty members? How do you, how do you, does it involve a lot of interactions uh, for you to, go ahead. Yes, it, it does. Um, you know, I, I really am very uh, blessed and fortunate to serve as a business academician as well as a practitioner. And so um, in terms of academia, serving in a leadership role at Harvard Business School allows for the interaction with students, faculty, and staff. And then as a practitioner, I relate to so many of the, um, the women at the conference because I'm an entrepreneur. I have a consulting firm and we develop business plans for companies and nonprofits. And I've served in leadership roles in corporate America uh, for Fortune 100 companies and I'm an author. So I am really blessed to uh, operate on a number of different levels um, and it's globally oftentimes. My clients are from India and China and of course here domestically in the United States and I enjoy all of it. Fabulous, I mean, I mean you're, you're truly a global citizen I must say. I must say, it, it, it definitely will enable you to get best practices to your workplace. I mean, today we are in a world where cultural competency, I think it's, it's a core to our success in whatever leadership roles we uh, take on. So I think for a person like you, the kind of exposure uh, uh, you are subjecting yourself to by virtue of your role that you're playing, I think you are very fortunate to be in a position uh, to pick um, all those wonderful, what say, uh, cultural competencies. Uh, amazing, yes. amazing. And, um, uh, the, the, um, the insights I really wanted to share, and let me know if this is appropriate time to share, is really about um, connecting business plans and purpose. So would you yes. like for me to share, Lakshmi? Uh, of course, I, I will come back to you. Okay, uh, let me know will, when you're ready. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have um, we have Alvin. Alvin is again um, a person with many hats, and she truly has friends from all over the world. Yes, I got to know Alvin through a friend of mine who's an ex colleague of hers from Pfizer, and um, great opportunities uh, opened out for you, Alvin, in your work area too. How do you? I mean, how has it defined you as a person? Uh, what are the takeaways you had from the leadership roles that you've been honing? I, I think, you know, um, thank you, first of all, for having me here and uh, the opportunity to know and friends from all over, not only the world, but having friends from many other cultures really enabled me to transcend some of the uh, uh, global conversation that we currently have. And, um, and I think... Um, the chance to uh, speak with so many people from so many culture, having many realities, I am kind of bringing that back within my current role. Like, okay, when I'm going to hear someone uh, explaining or talking about a business issue or a personal issue, I am quickly able to relate because yeah, I have correct. friends who already talked to me about something and it's something that is not going to be new and up to me to be really able to, to kind of educate, you know, my internal and even my external stakeholders on what it means, you know, to be from Eastern Europe, to be from India, to be American, to be Black American, 
to be black European. Um, and I think this is um, something I can, you know, really, I want to share. And, uh, and that's something I keep talking about when I meet people is really about listening, you know, listening is for me key listening from people who are different from us and having people from different culture around the world is you know helping me at least to be able to listen more wonderful i think that's one quality which all of us need to develop all the time you know we are less listeners and more talkers by virtue of the current uh, world we live in I think now I'm going to listen to Marina. Marina is a business leader, amazing business leader from um, Armenia. Where India and Armenia, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, we go back millions of years, I would guess. Over to you, Marina. Exactly. Uh, I'm again pleased uh, to meet everyone and I would like to thank you for moderation and for creation of the platform to meet so many um, successful women to share experience what we had what we are having or what we can have as for uh, the relations between uh, india and armenia they date very very to ancient times we can look we have a very big book of history we can both look into to see our roots just for your information armenian merchants back back in history they were really welcomed by attracted by Indians and welcomed uh, as, as, as merchants. They even had access to certain markets no other nations during those days really had. Um, I, um, what I would like to focus here before going too deep into speaking about the relations between Armenia and India, uh, being a business consultant on the one hand, uh, implementing commercial activities and producing also uh, cosmetics. And on, the, uh, on, my, on my left hand, which is closer to my heart, is engaged in public activity. We are supporting women businesses. I'm coaching different women. And I'm also a mother. A mother of three kids. My son is studying to be a doctor. The question every now and then that is being asked to me, how do you get the formula of success? I'm trying to balance. I'm trying to satisfy myself, um, not imposing very high objectives, not to get frustrated. I'm trying to balance. You are all ladies and you will confirm that it is really difficult to keep the balance. And the formula of success is to to be a mother on the one hand, to be a businesswoman on the other hand, and also to do something that you ought to do as an active uh, player of society. Fantastic. Where there is a will, there is a way. Yeah, so you so always have to pay the world. price, but you should know how, the, to, how to balance the price, how to balance the value. This is very really challenging. I'm absolutely learning on this session. Maggie, you are so different. The work you do is so different. Can you please tell us more about your, your research? And she's, Maggie is a folklorist. I think it, it, it's so romantic, you know? It's so phenomenally romantic. Can we hear a little about uh, your domain expertise area? Absolutely, but first, thank you so so much Lakshmi for having me on this you know, unparalleled platform and greetings dear friends. Aijan, Alvin, Shalette and Marina, it's so good to meet you and um, it is my pleasure and my you know, privilege also to make your acquaintance. <laughs> but before I say anything else, I want you to be a little bit prepared for power cuts because uh, they, the electricity here comes and goes and I'm in this small town in Assam and I am in this house that is, was built in 1906. So this is the background. So, but before uh, that, um, I'm a folklorist, yeah. And uh, what that means is that I uh, study artistic communication in small groups. That's the theoretical definition, yeah. But um, like primarily I'm a folklorist, but 
I have like closet closet affairs with uh, anthropology and the study of religion. Yeah. Now um, I am uh, you're like I have a PhD in folkloristics and I um, work and teach at the Department of Estonian Comparative Folklore in the University of Tartu. Okay, and uh, this department is so amazing simply because we are. I think it's the best department for the study for studying folkloristics also it's becoming so um important i think in this world today to actually understand what folklore actually means because you know while we can connect uh while while we can find folklore and we can connect folklore with everything everything is not folklore all right so um this is this is what i feel is something that is so important for us to to just acknowledge also like whether it is a song like a lullaby that you sing to, to your child or an urban legend or whether it's um i, I don't know this um narratives about uh, you know women and people protesting within the blm uh, you know um context you know all, all of this can be contextualized within the background of folklore. And I research that, but I'm an indigenous wo woman, a Kasi indigenous woman. That's how I identify myself, yeah. So my introduction. <laughs> oh, lovely introduction. And I'm actually very envious of you. I would love to, you know, change shows. It's, it's so good to be a folklorist. I mean, it, it's amazing. Uh, coming back to Dr. Shalit, can you, uh, can we know more about the business aspect of uh, the discussion we were having? You wish to share something about it? Yes, yes. So um, I, I, I want to first thank you, uh, Lakshmi, for the opportunity to share insights. And I'd like to thank uh, the Women Economic Forum and Dr. Aurora. I'm so delighted to be here. Uh, and, and share share with you all. Um, as I think about all the different topics, uh, one of the topics that I'm, I'm very passionate about is uh, the topic of business planning. Um, my, my consultancy is, is devoted to business planning, so I believe in that, and I've served in business planning roles. But I also believe, and I'm finding this when I'm working with my clients, is that oftentimes there's a gap between our business plans and our purpose as leaders. And so um, my goal is to really help us close that gap because we all are involved in so many wonderful initiatives, um, but it's important to also be purpose driven. Uh, I always say uh, when I'm traveling the world speaking at conferences that we don't have a personal life and a professional life. We have one life and we have to make that life count. And so um, when, when you're ready, I'll share um, just four quick principles on connecting business plans with purpose. I think uh, we will connect with you offline after the session. There are many things that we could um, discuss and discover. And at the end of the day, business women economic forums are also built uh, for women entrepreneurs and business women to network. There should be an outcome, you know, there should be business outcomes. So after this, uh, the economic forum is over and through, we will stay connected on that score and we're going to touch base with each one of you. Um, absolutely, I look forward to it. Absolutely, and uh, coming back to uh, Ajan, so uh, I thought you may want to leave, you know, and you're sitting with us. I'm so happy for that. You're muted. May I request you to unmute? Yeah, How can I just comment that uh, I'm so proud to be in, uh, you know, in the group of these wonderful ladies. I'm and of so course, happy for that. <laughs> Shalet, uh, thank you, you know, for saying that we, can, we have professional lives, but we cannot divide it with our own lives. And as uh, Marina said, I'm, I, I wanted to mention that I'm a proud mother of four, and I just delivered baby, he's uh, six months old. And oh this is what we are God. doing, you know, all women all over the world, you know, having so many things in one hand. And of course, I love my country, and um, I didn't want to make the image of that it is so bad. Uh, but I think uh, there is expression uh, that, you know, the best time comes before the bad times. So let, let's, you know, yes. hope and pray that our world survives through COVID and we will unite on what platform. And um, I will be with pleasure receiving all your wonderful uh, tasks, how to make it better. And we will follow up from our side, from all Kyrgyz ladies side. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful invite. I think we are going to invade your country, all of us. 
<laughs> Please come. It's a beautiful place. It's paradise. Absolutely. I Let's love Bishkek. I love Bishkek. It's an amazing You're city. all welcome. And you can stay in this cool, wonderful lake. I'll be sending photos to you. We Thank can't you. wait for the COVID scenario to change, you know. Coming back to Alvin. Alvin, can you also tell us a bit about your origin from the beautiful country where you come from? Yes. I was born and raised in Cameroon. It is in Central Africa. Um, it's even the, the nickname of Cameroon is uh, um, uh, Small Africa. It's Africa in miniature. That's okay. the small name of Cameroon. And, um, and then I moved to France uh, in 2004 for communication um, uh, school. And I have to say that I also, I cherish this uh, double culture because there's so many different things and uh, it, it, it helps me to have different lens uh, depending on situations. And, uh, um, and I'm married to a French man and uh, and I have a uh, mixed two mixed daughters again, and uh, talking about purpose uh, every day. I'm trying to explain them the uh, you know the purpose behind my job. I'm working with, uh, on diversity and inclusion, and um, yes, there's also you know um, you know business goals behind my work because I'm working in a you know corporate environment and. Um, it's also up to me to really explain them. Yeah, I come from Cameroon, I am in France. And uh, with that identity, I really don't want to lose my own self. I, I really try to continue being myself. It's not easy on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, talking about culture and my own identity, even if I consider myself as a global citizen, but I'm coming from somewhere, I'm coming from a different culture and um, you know, at my humble level, I'm trying to make at least let them speak my native language. It's not easy, but um, you know, that's something I'm also trying to do. You know, teaching them to be themselves and uh, open to the world, but be, be you know, remaining themselves as, as as women, as future women. So beautifully put. I think identity is so important to our existence. When we identify ourselves soundly, I think we are more open to world cultures. We're able to see people in their perspective, their views. We are more welcoming. And I think it does build a huge cultural competency, uh, thinking within our own systems. Yeah. Very, very beautifully put, Alvin. Coming to Marina, um, tell us, I mean, in Armenia, do you have one language or do you have many languages the way it is in India or Kyrgyzstan? Actually, we have one language. Uh, it, it belongs to in the, in the European language family and it dates to 405 AD. Just okay. Okay. 405 AD. So we have one single language, but we have different dialects. Okay. So different okay. parts of Armenia, they use specific Same dialect script. but the language is one single it's uh, armenian armenian so basically from what i understand is it's it's one language with one script and there are many dialects which use the same yeah, script exactly one two script. types eastern and western but everyone understands everyone okay oh that's that's really good in india you know there are so many languages and so many dialects but i guess we understand each other you know you don't always need language i guess uh, <laughs> Human to human relationship transcends uh, language barriers. Yeah. In if, fact, I would if like you to. You don't understand, you can always use your body language. Body language, I think. That... You're, you're in your hands. You can be away from it. Absolutely. Tell me, Maggie, uh, does Estonia also uh, does it have a platform of multi language uh, scenario or it's, it's just one language? has 1.2 million people and uh, there's about two languages one is russian and the other is estonian and there is a dialect photo and that's i think the only dialect that estonia has but estonian language in itself is crazy difficult to learn okay. i've been struggling to learn up to now okay. yeah but, but that's pretty homogeneous in that mm -hmm. way yeah. and of course uh, ajan is going to tell us about the number of languages they have. 
when I requested her to speak about the culture, she said, we have so many languages. Tell me what you want me to talk about. Yes, um, we have uh, uh, Kyrgyz people. We are actually, you know, started from NSA, from the part of Russia, which comes from Siberia. And we migrated uh, to Central Asia. It's one of the ancient nations. And the first Kyrgyz people uh, were almost uh, Europeans with green eyes and uh, red uh, hair. Now you look what happened after so many <laughs> migrating processes. And uh, yes, uh, indeed, there are more than 40 nations living in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, majority groups Kyrgyz. Uh, we have Russians, Koreans, Dungans, Uzbek, Kazakh. You just name it. Uh, even we have Estonians, Tatars. Um, uh, Chinese, uh, Uyghurs. So it's a lot of uh, uh, big, uh, in Soviet times, we were living in this kind of uh, multicultural environment. Now more it's a uh, Kyrgyz language, which is similar uh, to Turkish. It's like 40% uh, of uh, language you would understand. And um, we have, uh, as been, we've been nomadic um, people and we have uh, a lot of beautiful uh, nomadical traditions. So you will be, you know, we have this yurta, which is like, as you know, I think it's a very famous word now. Yes. It's a very specific place. And so people have uh, been traveling and having uh, uh, their um, life with a nomadic style of life. And a lot of uh, women do the handicrafts. If you would come to yurtas, you will see, you know, this, uh, we call it kurak. Uh, it's like each uh, different pieces of, uh, we say, a pattern. Uh, created in this kurak and a lot of handicraft that women uh, put as a would say heritage to their uh, future kids you know saying like uh, for example i jan be happy and that would be written on these uh, special carpets um, a lot of um, we have one of the best uh, uh, and famous and longest epos manas it's about hero uh, who saved our nation from uh, you know all bad evil people okay. <laughs> I should say, because it's a long story. And um, uh, our women uh, among Central Asian women were always uh, free. We never covered our faces. We've been uh, partners because, uh, you know, to have this household uh, when you travel, you've been a partner. You're not saying like women shut up and sit at home. You say to men, I am, you know, putting all house together, packing. So you'll be a strong woman, you know, who delivers kids, who knows how to, you know, make business, how to build house and how to be a strong partner. So I think in this uh, culture, we have a lot of respect to women. And of course, we have a lot of different influences, which is like a bit scary now for me. It's more too much, um, would say, uh, radical influence of people, uh, you know, groups who want to cover up our women. They say that we have to get back. And I say, you know, even many years ago, centuries ago, we never covered our faces. So we are trying uh, to keep the freedom of women. And uh, we are uh, like the civic society, we are not giving it away. We are saying we will fight for it because uh, uh, Kyrgyz women, uh, they have such a big potential. A lot of business ladies who are creating big factories and selling a lot of wonderful handicrafts. And I think uh, what I'm looking at all of you and you know, my heart is melting because I see again, strong leaders in each country. And I think it's now time to unite and this COVID online uh, meetings, they, it should be easier now. We should uh, be helping. Uh, I'm open for any, any uh, you know, advices from our side. And I mean, I can speak for a long time. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Lakshmi, if I took my <laughs> too much no, minutes. It's, 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 it's really good hearing you. And I'm so happy for you. You're in your usual spirits. So keep yourself right. healthy, safe, and get back to your normal life soon. A Thank lot you. of love from India, from all of us from India, America, Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, all of us, we are representing the world, one world, one people. Beth, um, uh, ladies, I mean, is there anything that you would like to share? Um, uh, shall it maybe one last parting, uh, uh, what's a statement for this uh, session? We would like to, there's a takeaway which yeah. we all would like to hear from you all. Yes, um, I would, um, again, just to encourage all of us um, as sisters, um, for the gentlemen who may be watching as brothers, um, that COVID-19 uh, has really presented a, a, a pause, a global pause for us. 
for deeper reflection, deeper uh, planning, deeper prayer. And there are many challenges, um, as we've discussed even on this session, but there's so many opportunities. And my sister just alluded to one that we've come together. You know, we're leveraging technology to come together to address uh, the issues and to oftentimes solve the, uh, for some of those issues and address some of the opportunities. So I would like for us to be encouraged um, during this time and also focus on legacy building. We all again have our different uh, professional ventures and platforms, but think about how we can truly leave a positive lasting legacy in our families, in the community and in the world. And that's what I work with um, the leaders at Harvard Business School on. Um, so many of the students and the executives that I work with in Fortune 500 companies and through my consultancy. So I just wanna encourage everyone today to um, focus on the positives and also uh, legacy building. So true. Marina, what would be your, uh, uh, how would you capture, although it's, it's a very short session of almost less than an hour, but I, I just think- I want to tell a small story uh, about a man who finds treasure. He takes his treasure and he hides it. Every day he comes there, he digs it, he looks at his treasures, he looks at his coins and he says, how rich I am. I'm really lucky, I'm really rich, and then he again digs it and goes away. One day, a uh, robber, he sees that, a thief, he sees that this man is hiding treasures. He comes there and he takes the treasures away and he puts black stones instead. The other day, the same man comes there and he opens his hole to see where the treasures are. He sees there is nothing, only black stones. He sits down and starts crying. The thief says, brother, why are you crying? He says, you know how rich and wealthy I was. I had really treasures. I was coming there and looking at it. And you know what the thief says? There's no difference. You were just looking. True. What I really mean is that the platforms that we are creating, this is this ecosystem. This is to the benefit of everyone. This is really a social capital. What I would really recommend and encourage that each of us makes use of it instead of staring at the treasure that we have. That's a very good parting statement, I would say. A story with a moral. Maggie, uh, what's your, uh, I think, are you there, Ma Maggie? Uh, I want to just show you a photo. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I have a photo for you. Can you see it? Uh, we can see a mobile, but I'm not able to see clearly. Okay, okay. Hang on a sec. Can you see this photo? Yeah? Okay, this, we, this girl over here and the yes. woman inside the house. All yes. right. They are wear snakes. All right. We were talking about COVID. We were talking about how these zoonotic diseases have um, breached. The, the, the animal human divide, right? And in, in the context of COVID, I think that uh, indigenous uh, sustainability, I think would actually contribute as a, this, this, this idea of these wear snakes can contribute like a case study to actually help us to understand the potential of how, potential solution rather of how, you know, life after, after COVID could look like. So, um, like, instead of going against nature, what about if we exist with it and find ways to mediate with it? That, I think, is one of the most uh, important things that uh, I find right now, which is relevant to all of us and our purpose, as we were talking about earlier. So, so this, this is what I would like to just mention. Like, yeah. So true, so true, because uh, we have a symbiotic relationship with nature be it the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom, somewhere along the line, I think the connectivity is being lost. So I guess folklorists like you all can actually bring it back and educate uh, the young ones, the new generations about this so that we may get back to a better living and better connected world for all of us. Over to you, Alvin. We would love to hear your take on this. Yeah. I think you just mentioned it in one of the 
a key topic I, I like is about education and you just mentioned it and uh, all of us, no matter where we are, we should continue educating others um, because others are not um, as, you know, privileged as, as us in terms of education. And we should really make sure that we, we listen. And when we listen, as I, I just said, is to, to also educate them, other people around us, family, friends. And also sometimes when we can get in front of us, in front of us some, you know, um, anger, let's try to pose and try to see what's behind an anger. And talking about women, we are, I'm so privileged to be here among many different women from many different cultures, from many different um, uh, ethnicities and from many different cultures. Educate others about that concept of intersectionality. One reality is not the reality of all women around the world. And um, that's something we should really be um, and start doing more and more. Teaching and educating others about realities of many women. One reality is not a reality of all women. And uh, thank you very much again for having me today. It's been our utmost pleasure to have all five of you on this panel. And WEF, on behalf of Dr. Harbin Arora and the team WEF, WEF is very honored, privileged to award the iconic woman creating a better world for us to Dr. Shalit Stewart. We will send, uh, we will send this award in the next couple of weeks. Uh, since artificial intelligence has not yet uh, enabled us to teleport your real award, it will be coming as a soft copy. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Great. I take the same Great. opportunity again to confer WEF award, Iconic Woman Creating a Better World for All to Alvin. Oh, thank oh. you. Bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> bravo. <laughs> it will again, it will hit your inbox in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Hey, Jung, back to you. Iconic Woman Creating a Better World for All. And oh, get well you. soon, get well soon. Thank you so Marina, much, thank you so much. We are so, so happy to confer this award on you. Iconic woman creating a better world for all. Absolutely, I mean, uh, so true to the kind of work that you're doing. And uh, lovely Maggie, iconic woman who's creating a better world for all through all the work you're doing. And keep continuing power to all of you ladies. And thank you very much for being on this session. It's been an absolute pleasure for us to have had this wonderful conversation with you all. And we look forward to more and more engaging conversations with you all. And there are many more WEFs which has been planned for this year and the next year. And we do hope you are able to participate in some of those on-ground women economic forums that you can actually come to new cities, new experiences, and it'll be more energetic. But Having said that, this has not been bad at all. We have managed to meet up on this platform. It's a new way, it's a new trend, and it's, it's a great enabler. Thank you so much, all of you ladies. Thank, Thank you, you for much, moderation. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Thank you all iconic ladies. You are all icons, all my God. I've never seen ladies. so many icons in one place. Thank <laughs> you. So many icons, and I'm, I'm really privileged to have you all out here. And, and please connect so. us in one group, uh, Lakshmi, yes, put, we put the phone, um, uh, you know, that we could uh, help each other. And uh, yes. thank you. I'm loving you all. I fell in love with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank Same you. Same here. Richard, you I think uh, on behalf of all of us, I can say that we return your compliments. Allow me a day's time and I'm going to create this WhatsApp group. It's so much more easier to uh, yes. communicate, you know, it's easier than an email. So we definitely, I think that would be the outcome of this session with all of y'all. Thank, Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Bye -bye, and bye -bye, loads of love to all your families. Thank you. Bye -bye. And to the Thank little six-month-old baby to Ayajan too. Love, love you, ladies. Baby. Let's be in touch. Bye. We will stay okay. in touch. Bye -bye. Absolutely. Stay connected. I would say bye-bye, not goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Я крутаюсь, я позади.